Welcome to lecture 4.3. We're now going to look at graphing tangent and cotangent functions. And we're going to use the similar table method um, that we just went through in 4.2 with new tables for tangent and a new table for cotangent, but really the similar process, similar variables, etc. We're going to look at the graph of the tangent function, the cotangent function, how to graph them, and then connecting graphs with equations. Remember that a vertical asymptote is a vertical line that the graph approaches but does not intersect. As the x values get closer and closer to the line, the function values increase or decrease without bound, going towards either positive or negative infinity. Remember that since tangent is equal to a quotient of sine over cosine, wherever cosine is zero, tangent is undefined, and thus we have the um, asymptotes that you can see here at negative pi over two, or 90 degrees, where cosine is zero, and also at pi over two, actually negative pi over two is 270, and um, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Both of those cosine is 0, and so the tangent by um, relationship of uh, being sine over cosine um, will be undefined at those values. <clears throat> tangent will also be equal to 1 or negative 1, where sine and cosine have the equal value, but possibly the um, different signs. And that happens at 45 degrees here, um, denoted by pi over 4 and negative pi over 4, which is the 45 degree reference angle in quadrant 4. Okay, so you can see a graph here. Tangent um, increases as we go from left to right. It is an increasing function. Um, and you can see that this function is periodic, like all of the trig function. It just continues again and again between. Um, again, the two asymptotes caused by values of cosine in that period where cosine is equal to zero. Okay. So some specifics about the tangent function. The graph is discontinuous um, at values of the form 2n plus 1 times pi over 2. This is just odd um, multipliers of pi over 2. 1 times pi over 2, 3 times pi over 2. 5, etc. So this just makes sure that as we're going around uh, making revolutions, we either hit it pi over 2, 3 over pi over 2, the 90 and 270 axes, okay? And has vertical asymptotes at those values. Its x-intercepts are of the form n pi. So whenever we get to a pi value, 180 or 0, where sine is equal to 0, when the numerator is equal to 0 of a fraction, um, we get zero value. So that's where the x-intercepts are is when the sine value equals zero. And that occurs at pi, um, at multiples of pi, as you can see here. The period of the tangent is, is one pi. Its graph has no amplitude. Now, why not? Remember, amplitude is the half the distance from the largest and smallest values. Well, since... Um, tangent goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, it has no extreme values. So it cannot have any amplitude. It doesn't have any max or minimum values. Okay. Um, the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. So this is an odd function by definition. And for all x in the domain, that the tangent of an angle of negative x will equal negative tangent of that positive angle. Okay. Cotangent, remember, is the quotient of cosine over sine. So very similarly to tangent, um, wherever the denominator is zero, it will be undefined. In this case, the denominator is sine. And sine is zero at zero and at pi. And we saw that um, similarly with the tangent. These are where the values were, um, the tangent values were zero. But here, because the sine is in the denominator, the cotangent will be undefined um, when the angle is 0 or pi. When sine and cosine are equal at 45 degrees, again here we have it at pi over 4, 
um, and 3 pi over 4. This is the pi over 4 reference angle in quadrant 2. We have the values of um, cotangent being 1 and negative 1 respectively. Okay, And then, of course, where cosine is equal to 0, when the numerator is equal to 0, then cotangent will be 0, and that happens at pi over 2, as you can see here. You can also notice that cotangent is a decreasing function. It goes down from left to right. The graph is discontinuous at values of x of the form x equals n over pi, again, when sine is 0, and has vertical asymptotes at all multiples of pi. Its x-intercepts are of the form 2n plus 1 pi over 2. This is, again, uh, values of uh, when the cosine or numerator equals 0. Then it will be crossing the x-axis. Um, and, of course, that happens at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, the, you know, basically the y-axis, the quadrantals 90 and 270. Its period is also pi. Again, like tangent, it has no amplitude because it goes from negative infinity to um, infinity. So it has no minimum or maximum values. And it's also uh, symmetric with respect to the origin. So it's an odd function as well and has that same um, pattern or rule that the cotangent of negative x will equal negative cotangent of x. We can use our graphing calculator easily for tangent functions, just simply using the tangent key. To graph the cotangent function, we must use one of the identities, either um, cotangent equals 1 over tangent x, or you could actually do it as cosine x over sine x. Okay. <clears throat> what we're going to do similar to what we did before, is that we're going to rewrite each equation to match the model. Notice this equation looks just like the one for sine and cosine. So we have all those same um, key elements or key variables, A equals amplitude. Really here, it's not so much an amplitude, as we said, because tangent and cotangent don't have amplitude, but they do have a multiplier of um, of the functional value. So we still have to consider that. I mean, and uh, you'll see here in the table, I've left amplitude in, but I've crossed it out um, so that you know that tangent and cotangent really don't have amplitude, but we still have to consider that factor um, as a multiplier of whatever values we have here. B is again the period constant, C is the vertical shift, and D is the phase shift or the horizontal shift. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with sine and cosine. We're going to rewrite each equation to match the model. We're going to identify the key elements and variables. And then we're going to build the table one row at a time. Um, be careful here. Note that the tables for tangent and cotangent are different. Um, specifically, the key values are different. The key x values, we, start, we don't have the same... Um, x values or angular values like we did for sine and cosine, and they are different for tangent and cotangent. So you need to know these values. Um, again, you might be able to build them mentally, like I, as I described it when you were looking at the graphs, that uh, tangent is undefined where cosine is 0, pi over 2, um, and negative pi over 2. And then we go through one pi revolution there. And cotangent is where sine is 0, which would be at 0 and at pi. Okay. But otherwise, everything in, this, in the table works roughly the same. Our first row and our fourth row will be um, given to us in the tables. We will then look for period shifts, phase shifts, um, amplitude or multipliers, and then any vertical shift. Here's the table for cotangent. Uh, again, it's a little bit different. Instead of going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, we go from 0 to pi. And we have the values 1, uh, excuse me, undefined 1, 0, negative 1, which is showing that it's a um, decreasing function, whereas tangent is increasing. But essentially, we're doing the same thing. You just need to make sure you understand 
the um, key x values, the key angle values, um, and the function values for those. All right, so let's try some problems. y equals tangent 2x, okay? So the table method, here's our model. <clears throat> we can see here that the multiplier in front of tangent is 1. So really there is no multiplier because when we multiply by 1, we don't change the value. Our b is 2. C is equal to 0 because there's no um, constant being added here. And also D is equal to 0 because we don't have a plus or minus on the X or the angle. So this is actually a, a pretty simple table to build. Um, we have our first row and our fourth row there. The only addition we have is the phase adjustment. I'm sorry, the period adjustment B. And so all we do is divide each of our key angles by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. These are all easy to see. Pi, uh, half of a half of a pi is a fourth of a pi, etc., etc. <clears throat> Since we don't have an amplitude or a multiplier shift or a vertical shift, we just use those stated values. So we have our x values, which again is the bottom row filled out in the first three rows, and our y values, which is the lowest um, row filled out in the bottom three rows. We simply graph this, um, and we can graph another period by adding one half of the period to the left and one half of the period to the right. Okay. And again, we can see here that we have asymptotes at negative pi over 4 and pi over 4 from our table. The value at pi over 8 is negative 1, at 0 it's 0, and at pi over 8 it is 1. Let's try one a little bit more difficult. Here we have y equals negative 3 tangent 1 half x. Here we have um, an amplitude multiplier and a period um, adjuster. Okay. Again, always look back to the original model identify the key variables, in this case both our um, constant or vertical shift and our phase shift are equal to zero, and our amplitude is equal to negative three, or our multiplier, and our period um, adjuster is one half. Again, we're going to build the table. D be careful here now, dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two. Okay, dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two. And so we get these new values. Again, the first row and the fourth row are given. So we multiply the second row. We multiply the first row by two to get the second row. Okay, there is no phase shift, so we left that blank. We have our tangent values that are given. And our amplitude equals negative 3, so we multiply each of those by negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive, and so forth. If something is undefined and we multiply it by a number, it doesn't change. So the undefineds will always stay that way. Um, it is possible they'll move, as they did here, because of the period. Um, but these y values won't change by any amplitude or um, vertical shift. Okay. So again, we have the bottom of the top three rows that's filled out is our x values. The bottom of the second three rows, the last three rows that's filled out are our y values, and this is what we graph. Okay. Notice here, because the coefficient negative 3, the amplitude coefficient is negative, the graph is reflected. Normally, tangent is an increasing function going up as we move from left to right. But since our amplitude multiplier is negative 3, it uh, shifts this into a um, decreasing function, which makes sense, right? Um, negatives we often think of as opposites, so it's going in the opposite direction. Okay. Let's try a cotangent function. Here we, uh, again, we're going to look at the model. Then we're going to find our values. Our amplitude multiplier is 1 half. Our period adjuster is 2. And again, 
we have no um, vertical shifts and we have no phase shifts in this problem. We build out our table. We have our cotangent table. Remember that cotangent is undefined when this is cosine over sine, when sine is zero and, and that occurs at zero and at pi or zero and 180. Okay, and then we have our other values here that are given row one and row four. You need to know these, uh, memorize them, or, or know how to build this. Since our um, period shift is two, we divide by two, which is the same as since these are fractions, we multiply by one half. That makes these pretty easy to find. There is no phase shift, so we leave that blank. These are our given values when we start the chart. And our amplitude is one half, so we multiply each of these values by one half. And now again, we have our x and our y values to graph. And we can see that here. Okay, so the table method can really help. Um, and we're not going to do too much, too many complicated ones with these. Let's look at another model here, um, just so that we have something, um, the vertical shift element in here as well. Every y value of this function will be two units more than the corresponding y value in y equals tangent x causing the graph to be translated two units up compared to the graph of y equals tangent x. So notice here we have just a simple function of tangent x, which we know what the model is for that. Those are the given values on the table anyway, and we're simply going to add two to it. So we don't really need to use the, the table here. We can just shift the graph up by two units. Okay, shift the graph up by two units. You can also do this on your calculator, and you can look at, as it's saying here, you can look at the coordinates at the same x value um, and find the y value, etc. Okay. All right, let's look at one that's got a lot going on. Okay. So again, we look at the model. This is the cotangent model, so we're going to use the cotangent table. We want to identify A, B, C, and D, all the key elements. A is the amplitude multiplier, which we can see in front of cotangent is a negative 1. B is the multiplier on the argument. This is the multiplier between the trig function and the parentheses, which has x as a singular value, not a multiplier in front, and then any plus or minus, which is the phase shift. So here our um, period adjuster is actually equal to 1, which means the period doesn't change because when we multiply or divide by 1, we get the same value. Here, our, that was our b. Our c is our constant that we add or subtract. We are adding a negative 2, which obviously is the same as minusing 2. Um, so it's going to go down by 2 units. So c is negative 2. And then D is our phase shift, and we can see here that, remember, it's minus D, so this is going to be a, shape, a phase shift in the positive direction um, of pi over 4. So D equals pi over 4. So again, we're just doing the same thing. We're identifying what A, B, C, and D equals. Now be careful, A here is negative 1. It's not 1, which means we don't do anything. It's negative, so we have to um, fill that aspect out in our table. All right. Once we've identified the key variables, we build our table. Again, it's cotangent. Cotangent is undefined where sine, which is the denominator, is zero, and that happens at zero and at pi. And then we have the interim values here from our table and our y cotangent values here, including the asymptotes on each end. Since b equals one, the angles divided by 1 are the same, so we left that blank. The phase is plus d. Remember, uh, we're going the opposite direction. This is a negative pi over 4, so we're going to add pi over 4 to each of those. 0 plus pi over 4 is pi over 4. 
pi over 4 and pi over plus pi over 4 is pi over 2, etc. As we go through these, you can do those and see those values. Row 4 is our given values, and then our amplitude. Remember, our amplitude was negative 1, so each of these we're going to multiply by negative 1. Again, the undefined values, something's undefined and you multiply it by negative 1, it stays undefined, so we're just going to continue there. 1 times negative 1 is negative, 0 times anything is 0, and negative 1 times a negative 1 is positive. Okay? The last thing we do in all these tables is to add our constant, um, our vertical shift constant, and that was equal to negative 2. Negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. 0 and negative 2, negative 2. And 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1. We filled out our table. The lowest of the three rows with values is the x value. The lowest of the last three rows is our y values. These are what we graph. And so we have this graph here. An additional period was added to the left. Okay. So we can see those values at pi over 2, it's negative 3. At uh, 3 pi over 4, it's negative 2. And at pi, it is equal to negative 1. All right. Sometimes, and in your homework, you'll be asked to figure out the equation for a graph. Well, we can see because this graph has um, two asymptotes that it's obviously either um, tangent or cotangent. Okay, so what you kind of want to do is look at the points that it's going through and ask yourself some questions. So normally, both tangent and cotangent key points are 1 and negative 1. But we can see here the key points are negative, excuse me, 2 and negative 2. So what does that tell you about the amplitude A? That's the first question. We also see that we're going through the origin. Which function, tangent or cotangent, goes through the origin? And finally, if we figured out these two things, you know, how do I get turn a 1 into a 2? Well, I multiply by 2, so that looks like my um, multiplier is equal to 2. Tangent is the function that goes through the 0, I mean through the origin. So this looks like the tangent function, but we have a problem. Tangent normally is an increasing function. So what does this do to the amplitude multiplier of a. Well, if I want to change a function from an increasing function to a decreasing function, I multiply it by a negative 1. So here, since I have a multiplier already of 2, if I multiply that by negative 1, I'm going to turn a into negative 2. So this is the graph of y equals tangent x, but it's reflected across the x-axis and stretched vertically by a factor of 2. Therefore, the equation of this graph is y equals negative 2 tangent x. We could also have made this um, a cotangent function with a phase shift that would put um, it through the origin. Okay, that's a little more complicated, but we could do that. We could write this also as a cotangent function.